Okay, let's have an, a look at another application of circular motion. And that's where we have an object swinging around a pole. Now that could be a ball swinging around um, in a game where we hit the ball around. It could be one of those merry-go-rounds where we're sitting on a, a swing. It could be any one of a number of objects that swings around a pole. So let's look at what's happening. First of all, we've got our pole that's sitting vertical. We've got our string or our chain attached, and we've got this object that's traveling around the pole. Now there's a few forces on this particular object. First of all, we've got uh, gravity acting on the object. So we've got MG acting downwards. We've also got a tension in our string, and that's at some angle theta. Now we can um, split that tension force into its horizontal component, which will be FTX, and FTY in the vertical component. So let's look at those two relationships. First of all, in the Y direction, we have FTY, because we've got this angle theta in here, will be equal to FT sine theta. And in the horizontal direction, we'll have FTX, which will be equal to FT cos theta. So we know that in the vertical direction, we're not getting any movement up or down. So we can actually say that FT sine theta is equal to mg. And similarly, we can say that FT cos theta is equal to the centripetal force experienced by this object because there are no other forces on the object. So we say FT cos theta is equal to the centripetal force. So how might we use this? Well, let's have a look. Let's say we have a 650 gram ball and it's attached to a pole by a string. It rotates about an orbit that's 0.9 meters every 2.25 seconds. And we want to find out this tension in the string. So let's go through this logically. Our radius is 0.9 meters. Our period, capital T, is 2.25 seconds. Acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second. We don't have a velocity or speed of the object. We don't have an, a centripetal acceleration, nor do we have a centripetal force. And ultimately, we don't have a tensional force either. So to look at this, we need to go through a few steps. First of all, we need to find the velocity of the object. And we get that as being equal to 2 pi r, in other words, the, um, the, the total circumference, divided by the time that it takes to travel that circumference. So we have 2 times pi times 0.9 over 2.25, being the period, gives us a speed of two and a half meters per second. Next thing we need to do, and we could go straight to this step, but for demonstration purposes, let's find this centripetal acceleration. So centripetal acceleration is equal to V squared over R, putting our numbers in, and our R here is 0 0.9. We've got 2.5 squared over 0 0.9, which gives us 6.9 meters per second squared. Now it's traveling because because this is traveling um, in a circular orbit, we know that this centripetal acceleration will occur toward the center of that orbit. Next, we'll look at our centripetal force. And we know that centripetal force will be equal to mass times the centripetal acceleration. So 0 0.65 being the mass times the 0.6, sorry, the 6.9 here, gives us 4.56 newtons. So it experiences a force inward of 4.56 newtons. Now going back to our diagram, we know that our tensional force is equal to our horizontal and our vertical components. So we can use Pythagoras' theorem and rearrange it to get Ft, our tensional force being equal to the square root of 4.56 plus, or sorry, squared plus 6.5, which is mg. In other words, that's equal to Ft sine theta which gives us a value of 7.9 newtons. So the tensional force for a 650 gram ball will be 7.9 newtons. We can also calculate the angle that this object will make with respect to the horizontal um, as well. And we do that by rearranging the tan relationship. So we get mg over our centripetal force, put our numbers in, and we find that this particular object will swing out at 55 degrees to the horizontal.